So I'm going to be honest with you guys. I don't see any point in opening up this analysis video like I usually would with a dozen benchmarks to demonstrate the average performance of the products that launched today. And that's because the products that launched today, the R9 9900X and the R9 9950X are just not worth buying if you're going to use them on Windows. Flat out, I don't recommend them to anybody. Don't worry about the average performance. It is bad. Even if you're somebody that wanted to use Zen 5 for productivity, on average, the uplift is single digits, not enough to warrant for paying extra for a 9950X over a 7950X, especially when you consider all the weird software issues that come along with Zen 5, not worth the headache, save the money. And I'm also not going to split hairs very much over the fact that you can argue Zen 5 did technically get the IPC uplift AMD claimed if you look at spec 2017, nor that some results on some websites were definitely better than other websites. And that's because, in the case of Tom's hardware, Sure, they did get a respectable uplift between the 9950X and 7950X with PBO enabled in Cinebench 24, but then you also have to admit that they only got a 7% uplift over the 14900K when AMD's own slides before launch said that it should get a 21% uplift that's ridiculous this product is not worth buying or and it's not worth rewarding amd with how they have decided to launch it in this sorry state but one has to ask how is that even possible how does 21 percent become seven percent well if you think about it, it can really only come from one of two places, although I do suspect it's a little bit of both. Either AMD just flat out lied to us, or this product, Zen 5, was launched a month or more before the software in microcode was actually truly ready. Now let me explain that last point. Now there probably was some cherry picking, but at the same time, I do feel it's abundantly obvious that these chips just really aren't working correctly. When you look at Der Bauer openly stating that his test results were nonsensically all over the place or Tom's hardware openly stating that AMD's drivers just weren't working properly for them and Anantech pointed out CCD to CCD latency that they do not believe should be there logically and also core parking issues that demonstrate Windows clearly isn't properly scheduling Zen 5. I mean and look at this we are getting a 37 percent regression in performance in Warhammer 3 between the 9950X and the 7950X but then a somehow smaller but still terrible regression of 30% between the should be weaker 9900X and the 7950X. And not just should be weaker because of boost clocks, the 9900X has only six cores on each CCD, so more often it may need to bounce between them. This is inconsistent and it makes no sense. And I feel like this type of thing proves it's not just an architectural hardware regression, but that Windows is not using Zen 5 properly. Unlike with, of course, here we go, in Linux, where Pharonix got fantastic results across all apps, including games. And uh, heck, here, here's another example from Windows where in Counter-Strike 2, the 9950X goes from losing badly to an i7-14700K to beating the i9-14900K when the resolutions were swapped from 1440p to 4K. That makes absolutely no sense. And actually, I want to continue with Wendell here and just play some clips from his video to give you all a sense of how obvious it is. Guys, this isn't copium. It's obvious Windows isn't using Zen 5 properly. This is not something that I can really capture and communicate in benchmarks yet. It, it took me a little by surprise, but it seems like there are some games that perform better on Linux that are designed for Windows than on Windows natively. In fact, I think that Windows is not doing something correctly with these CPUs. And I can even squeeze a little bit more out of this with 160 FPS playing some tricks in Windows. You can do process lasso to pin things for SMT. You can set a process priority. You can run it as administrator. Little things like that make a bigger difference than I would expect, specifically with Cyberpunk. It's possible to get Cyberpunk to run at like 230 FPS, 1080p high, which handily outperforms the 14900K, but not always. And it may depend on disabling Windows security features, which is not like, I'm not saying that you should have to disable Windows security features to do something. I'm saying that something is not configured right somewhere. I don't know. There wasn't enough time to really figure that out. All right, so then you have to ask, if this is some sort of improperly finished software issue, how did AMD let the biggest self-own in history happen? Well, upon seeing insane things like this and this this morning, I did scramble to get some feedback from anyone I could get a hold of at AMD because I wanted to ask as quickly as I could, 
is what I'm seeing here what I'm actually seeing? It looks obvious that AMD launched a new generation without finished software in Windows or maybe even fully working microcode. And when I asked that question to the first person I was able to get a hold of, this person basically told me, yes, that, well, they don't know specifically in the case of Zen 5, what they are seeing here looks a lot like the microcode just isn't finished and that this is what you would usually see out of early engineering sample benchmarks before it was completely done. And then I got a hold of someone else at AMD and this person spilled the beans on basically everything that I think we need to know about how AMD was able to commit one of the biggest cell phones in history. And I want to show you that leak, but then also talk about what I think AMD could do to try to turn things around for Zen 5. But first, an ad from a sponsor. This piece of content is brought to you by Ugreen and their 100 watt and also 20,000 mAh 130 watt Nexode power banks. The 130 watt Nexode is a light and compact power bank that allows for super fast charging via a 100 watt type C port, then an additional 30 watt type C port. You can use both at the same time for max 130 watt outage. And then it also even has a third 22.5 watt type A USB port as well. Now what this means is that you can charge an iPhone 15 by 55% or a MacBook Pro 16 inch by 40 43% in just 30 minutes. And you know what? You can also charge both of them at the same time, probably to full capacity because of how powerful this thing is. That's right. Even more incredible, in my opinion, is that its airline approved 20,000 mAh battery allows you to fully charge an iPhone 15 four times. Oh, and the battery is automotive grade, meaning that it can retain more than 80% of its capacity after 1,000 charge cycles. Oh yeah, and it also has an incredibly useful and frankly very cool TFT smart display that shows amperage and voltage. I find it very useful. So if you want to help out the channel by getting either the 130 watt or 100 watt Ugreen Nexo power banks for yourself, follow the links in the directions below to get the best price on these products. And again, you're helping out the channel if you do so. Now, before I put this leak on screen, I do need to remind you all that I have been warning people of Zen 5 issues month after month, pretty much all year, especially at the beginning of the year when I was the person to exclusively leak that Zen 5 was having a bunch of problems and would be delayed into the second half of the year. Now, I got a lot of attacks from people that week that this could not possibly be true, but you know what? It was true, and I need to remind you of that because one of the sources that was part of that leak that told me enough details to get that right was now willing today to tell me or to let me actually tell you more about what was going wrong because of how horribly this has ended up. I wasn't supposed to talk about it before, but I've been given the green light to talk about it now. And so what you're seeing on screen is from one of those sources of that correct leak. And this person said, the first thing that people should know is that the Zen 2 team was the first team to be in charge of the Zen 5 architecture and that they insisted on using their own Zen 2 code base, which practically means starting from scratch compared to if they were to go with the code base of later Zen architectures. And they did this because they just said they were more familiar with it, and they didn't, I guess, trust the code base from other Zen core teams. And this is where I've heard that there's a decent amount of tribalism between these different core project teams at AMD, and it seems like in this circumstance, it's finally caught up with the company that they can't behave this way anymore. Now, second, I was told that Zen 5 also changed ownership between teams several times throughout its development. This led to many delays and a lot of unnecessary rework. And finally, I was also told that at the same time, marketing was not communicating well with reviewers. Uh, one example I was given is that the core parking details wasn't communicated to reviewers until five days after they received the test samples and were already testing them. And that just in general, marketing was dropping the ball on communication. And so do you see the picture being painted here, people? This person didn't work on Zen 5, but they do work at AMD, and they do know people who worked at, on Zen 5, both the design side and marketing. And from what this person could gather, the project simply made key mistakes from the start, was plagued with problems throughout its development, and ultimately, it looks like after they delayed Zen 5 to quarter 3, they didn't want to admit they probably needed to delay it to quarter 4, and so they rushed the product out the door before the final things were completed, and those final things 
were the software. But I have to say that it's pathetic that this was able to happen to any generation at all. And while I do believe my sources, and I do think the main problem is unfinished and sloppy software that is causing a lot of the Zen 5 issues, especially with the dual CCD models, I do also have to say that there also has to be some component of this launch that had some maliciousness involved. Because Someone at AMD must have been lying to someone else at AMD. I don't know if like something was being hidden from marketing and so the marketing team actually believed this is how Zen 5 would perform or I don't know if marketing knew there were tons of issues but just insisted on you know launching when they did launch and also communicating the best case scenario and just hoped for the best. But I just have to imagine that slides like this were at a minimum lying to other parts at AMD someone at AMD made these slides and somebody either allowed the slides to be made or made them knowing that they were not telling the truth to the other people in their own company, let alone the public. And uh, well, now I'm sure you all are wondering, can this be fixed in some magical microcode update or new Windows updates? And the truth of the matter is, I don't know, and I don't want to lie to you. Nobody I spoke with today seems to be sure if this can be fixed with software, and if it can, how much it can be fixed. But pretty much everyone thinks it is very likely that some performance can be won back through updates, or dare I say, just actually finally finishing what should have been the launch software hopefully in a month or so. But again, I don't actually have a timeline. I don't have a specific percentage performance that I think could be one back. Oh, and to anybody that says that this leak is just AMD copium or something, I started digging for this leak today after seeing the excellent testing of Windle at Level 1 Techs and other people on YouTube and other tech websites. And so if you say this doesn't make sense and it's copium, then you're calling into question the integrity and the data provided by Wendell and other people as well, which I think is downright disrespectful. And I just have to say, guys, everyone said that today. The results we saw don't add up, they're inconsistent, and they don't make sense. It is not copium to be able to read the data correctly. And that's what the data says. But anyways, this gets me to my final point, and that is that I believe what AMD needs to do is go into the bunker, go into the war room, and they need to start planning right now how they're going to do a reboot of Zen 5. And here's how I think they could do it if they have any brains over there. Now, at a minimum, obviously, they first need to fix core parking, driver, and software issues. And assuming, assuming they can do that and claw back substantial performance, they need to prepare that, have it loaded and ready with 800 series motherboard that haven't launched yet and then have a new SKU or more than one new SKU that will launch with it and force reviewers to do new reviews. I think it could be something as simple as a 170 watt 5.7 gigahertz 9800X. You launch this product that will be stronger than the 9700X, should have the best gaming performance, and then you know you also push it hard and have the new motherboards with the new codes to make it look good. But if I'm being entirely honest actually, Ideally, they should be doing the relaunch with X3D products. In fact, I would argue that my 9800X idea would help, but the only way to truly reverse the tremendous damage AMD has done to the Zen 5 brand would be to go nuclear. And I mean nuclear with an all V-cash lineup with aggressive pricing. I mean something like a 699-9950X3D with two V-cash CCDs, a 549 uh 9900X3D, again, two Vcash CCDs, don't take prisoners, a 399-9800X3D, and a 299-9600X3D, and then at the same time, drop prices a bit on the non-X3D parts, and you do this so that you have a new lineup, which would prompt new reviews for the high end down to the low end, and you'd have that Vcash on every CCD to maximize performance, efficiency, and frankly, to maximize excitement. You'd have reviewers saying, oh yeah, you know, Zen 5's initial launch was terrible, but you know, today they're launching a product that they've never done before. Products like before years after the generation's out, they're already giving us a six core with Vcash. They're giving us dual Vcash CCD flagships. So we're really excited to look at this today and see if they can turn things around because we have to admit AMD's trying their best as they should be. And yeah, I know all of this sounds like a pipe dream and maybe it, maybe it is a pipe dream, 
But that is what I think AMD needs to do to win back the hype that they just threw into the trash right now. Remember, I'm saying what they would need to do to get that outcome. I'm not saying that's what AMD would do. AMD does tons of dumb things all the time. I just actually think it would take something that substantial to win back the respect of the do-it-yourself market and, and maybe even win back the respect of OEMs right now who probably aren't happy about the inconsistent performance they are seeing that they wanted to sell in pre-made systems. And on a final note, I just have to say that this truly has been the weirdest CPU launch season that I have ever seen in my life. I've gone from saying I can't recommend Intel anymore to now saying that I can't really recommend Ryzen 9000 at all until I see proof that it's fixed. And you know what the funny thing is about both of those circumstances, both Raptor Lake and Zen 5? The problems were caused by rushing the generation out before it was really ready. However, for Intel, their mistake was rushing out an overvolted generation that was untested because Intel was desperate, and therefore, it's somewhat understandable why Intel did what they did that led to Raptor Lake failures, although it's certainly not easily forgivable. But with AMD and Zen 5, this is just a self own that was easily avoidable if they would have just waited another month or two to finish the software it'd be so easy to have not had this happen and what's so crazy about it all is that there was no reason for zen 5 to launch right now the 800 series motherboards aren't ready those are the things you'd want to sell with them to make extra money the vcash variants aren't ready and you know zen 4 sales didn't take off until the vcash models launched so you'd probably want those at launch to maximize day one sales anyway Anyways, and Arrow Lake isn't going to be out for months and maybe many months when we look at the rumors pointing to them possibly delaying it further. AMD, you didn't have the motherboards ready, you didn't have the vCache models ready, and you didn't have competition that would be a reason to put something out early before it was finished. There was absolutely no reason to launch Zen 5 now, clearly before it was ready, and you had every reason also to not launch it right now unless you had to. AMD, just what the fuck?